pass a few things out to you. Rachel, would you like one of these? Hmm? Not right this oh, minute. Okay. Oh. Yep. Thank you, sir. Sir, these are all the same thing. Yep. So, four pages. The first page. You've got a history, ten-year history of uh, property taxes. These are actual figures that Brenda gave us, so we know they're absolutely perfect, right? That's correct. Okay. Thank you. And then the question always comes up, at least initially, uh, if we're going to estimate the coming years, what we have for revenue in a coming year, how do we go about doing that? Property taxes, we can, we can take the, the form that the assessors use, and we can come up with one pretty quickly. So that's not too bad. We've also got a method called... Uh, Linear regression. Find some use for my math, math degree and what I used to teach in high school. Uh, and basically what it amounts to is if you plot the data that you've got here, the data being the year, say, on the x-axis, and then the property taxes on the y-axis, can we find a linear equation that is a close approximation of the data. And you've got it in front of you. I'm not, I, I put it down there. I made the assumption that, that most of you probably don't remember your algebra one from high school. Is that a fair assumption? Yeah. So we've got this thing called y equals mx plus b. That's the linear equation or the format for a linear equation in slope intercept form. M is the slope, and in this case, the slope is the Basically, the, I'm going to call it average, but that's not the correct term. The average change that takes place in any given year. And in this case, taxes go up, or the revenue from taxes go, go up, about $342,000 or $343,000 every year. And if you went back to year 2000, which is the starting point, the taxes should be in the neighborhood of $4,240,000. And it goes up 342000 every year after that. So for FY 2020, FY 2019, obviously we've already gone through that. FY 2020, we've got just a shade under $11 million that we expect to raise in taxes without, without looking at debt exclusions. And the debt exclusions are what, about $600,000, 500000 but here, the debt exclusion are, are attributable to those pieces of debt, so there's nothing that we can do with that money. Any questions on any disagreement? Mm -mm. That second page. Second page, local receipts. This is the one that's the most difficult. You've got 10 years of history in front of you, and if you look, uh, FY 2016 and FY 2017, these are actual, this is actual data. This is what came into the town, mm -hmm. in the local receipts. 1.9 million, 1.8 million, 2.4 million. That's an extraordinary difference. That's over $500,000 difference. A lot of people bought cars that year. Cars, probably, probably a lot of inspections. Building. Building yes. inspections. Yeah. So that's, so that it makes it kind of difficult. Mm -hmm. And this is the one where we've typically said, look, we go through and we, and we take an average, and then we take 80% of the average. To be conservative. To be conservative. Mm -hmm. We do the five years. Pardon? We do the rolling five years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think we probably can do, be a little, little more accurate if we, if we use the same method that we talked about before, 
linear regression analysis, and essentially what that says is, if you look on any given year, the typical or average increase is about $93,000. Mm -hmm. Clearly, FY16 and FY17 aren't typical. Nonetheless, if we, if we use the calculation and we look at 2020, slightly less than $2.5 million is what we anticipate we'll get for revenues. That could be anywhere from $2 million to $2,750,000 probably. But this is the one where we, we typically make a reduction, and, and I think that makes sense. It's, it's worked in the past, or we've always used it, and, and nobody's complained about it in any event. Is that, so if we take a reduction, I don't care whether you take 20 or 25 percent of the uh, $2,476,000, and we'll use that as the estimate. What do you think, Brenda, 20 or 25 percent? 25. So use the 1.8 million? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Brenda, did you compare that to what you and I did? I'm just curious. It's, uh, it's close. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Great. it's close. He didn't take the 85% of the initial year like you and I did, but yeah, we did compare. Okay. We'll come back to this. You've got state aid mm -hmm. as the next item. And this is, we actually bring in over, now well, close to $3 million of state aid. But the money that we can use oh, is the $1.4 million that mm -hmm. you see here. I would like you to take a look because it's pretty consistent. If you start back in 2009 Minus 42. and go up to uh, 2018, the amount of state aid that we're receiving, the, the net figure of after you subtract out school choice money, after you subtract out the charges and fees that are on that, we're, we're, losing, it, we're dropping $42,000 a year. I was surprised at that, even though I've gone through this calculation or, or looked at these figures before. I didn't realize that we were actually losing that, but there they are. We went from $1.8 million to $1.4 million in 10 years. Yep, that's why it's very difficult. It is. And if you notice, uh, using the calculation, we're showing 1.3 million approximately. So. $14,150,000. Mm -hmm. The other thing that we've got, and, and I'll bring it here now, uh, free cash. This is, the, this is the, I guess in some ways, the problem child. Sure. So Brenda put together this list of. Oh, I have, I have yeah. copies. Here. So here's what we got for free cash. Uh, the bottom number, the uh, for of one million two hundred and seventy-eight thousand. That's the free cash figure for the current year. Yep. So that's money that we have in, in hand that we can use. <coughs> the question is, how should we use free cash? I guess put it another way. Where should we not be using free cash? So I'll throw out my two cents worth and that and ask everyone else to join in with their idea. I am troubled using free cash for recurring expenses. For example, salaries for, I don't care, pick a department. If we use free cash to fund that, because free cash is that, that number that does move up and down uh, and because it's really not a revenue source, what it, what it is, it's leftover funds from, in this case, what was, 
Well, I think we carried over three hundred to four hundred thousand dollars in free cash from last year, so that's mm -hmm. where three to four hundred thousand. Uh, the last year we estimated. What do you remember? What we estimated for uh, local receipts? Uh, it was a million five sixty-three. Okay, a million five sixty-three, and uh, for fiscal eighteen. Eighteen, and we brought in two point two million. So a million five to two point two, <coughs> seven hundred thousand dollars more. Plus the three hundred. And then and then a couple hundred thousand that departments returned that they hadn't spent. Mm -hmm. But it's that it's going back to those local receipts. That's really nice to have. But the problem is that we can't depend on Local receipts coming in at seven hundred thousand dollars more than we estimated on an annual basis. Well, I, I think I've heard some of the concern in the years past is that if you if you don't if you're not conservative, you wind up wind up with a year like two thousand and nine with seven hundred thousand um, in free cash in your slashing budgets. And mm -hmm. So it makes sense to be conservative. Yep. And you, I guess your point here is that we might be a little too conservative in some areas, or, or are you looking for funding to kind of deal with some of this capital stuff? No, I'm looking to try to identify areas where we can use free cash and be safe using it. it makes sense. I, I mean, it's not safe year, to use it to fund the police department, with, right. for example. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, there's there's pros and cons of, of either argue, side of the argument, but I... I mean, especially after 2009, I feel very comfortable and I really like the fact that we are conservative in our estimates. And so I don't want to change that because I think, you know, I mean, there's a lot to say for having that little safety cushion a mm -hmm. little bit. So here was the thought, and I think Brenda will support this because uh, we've talked about it. We look at, at the uh, local receipts. We, you know, my calculation says that we should be bringing in for local receipts uh, two point uh, nearly two and a half million dollars. I wouldn't bet fifty cents on that. No, I wouldn't figure. Either. I wouldn't either. Not with the soft economy. So we said we're going to use one point eight five. What if we take five hundred thousand dollars in free cash and stick that on the bottom and say, as a backstop? For the local receipts to cover our to cover our tail, if that if those local receipts don't come in at the two and a half million dollar figure, mm -hmm. we've got the money. We're using two and a half million or close to it in our estimate. We know we have the five hundred thousand. Matter of fact, we've got one point nearly one point three million. Mm -hmm. So using five hundred thousand as a backstop, and if we're fortunate next year. And we come in with 2.5, and we start the year off with 500,000 in free cash that we, you know, it's just but rolls I, over. I feel like we kind of do that already. <coughs> we do. We do. I mean, fact. really. I just, I, mean, I just kind of want everybody to know that that's that. there. Yeah, I'm, I'm, but I, I feel like we do that every year, so, because we're. But I think Skip's idea is that we're. Maybe maybe uh, formally putting some value to it. We're we're actually voicing it, whereas we usually hem and haw and oh, we yeah. should be using free cash and blah blah blah. But if we say okay, like we're going to use that five hundred thousand mm -hmm. and be okay with using that five hundred thousand, like this year we used three hundred and twenty-seven thousand just for the scams operation. You know that truly is not a non-recurring thing. It's a it's a it's a thing that you should budget for every year. So that was just, that's the big chunk that we used, and I can't remember what the small amounts were. But well, no, there was one, there were two, there was 500,000 that we put into stabilization. Correct. Oh, yes. As far as, as I'm concerned, that's a great place for it. I, right. You may, you may argue about putting in stabilization, but if you put stuff in stabilization, free cash looks like the stuff you want to put in stabilization. Absolutely. Because if it doesn't recur, then, well, we you just don't put it in next year. Yeah, right. I, I'm, I'm I just in favor of continuing to be conservative 
And the reason why I feel so strongly about that is because we really don't know what's happening on the federal level, mm -hmm. except that I can honestly say there is less federal dollars coming down to the states. And so the states are tightening up. And, and, and there just is less dollars. And that's obvious in our well, yeah. local receipts. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and so I was, fair I was yeah. surprised at that. I really was surprised. I, no, I, I wasn't I mean, surprised we were, that it was about the same, but we've well, actually we've lost been, the charter, The charter schools have really been giving mm -hmm. us a hit. And that's why the, mm -hmm. um, we have been going down, because the charter schools are impacting us. And well, I don't know if they're impacting no, they state are. aid. Question. No, it's, sure. It, to me, the stabilization, it's, in a sense, it's free cash that's set aside. It's still available for use. Yeah. Yes. Free cash is available for use. Mm -hmm. Is one easier to use than the other yes. when you go yes. to the voters? Which yes. are, how does that work? Stabilization is, is two-thirds vote, and the free ca use of free cash simple is just majority. It's a yeah, simple just majority. majority, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in a way, by putting it in a stabilization, we're making it tougher to spend it. Correct. Yes. And, you're, and you're putting it toward those non- It has non, to be more of a conscious decision. And you're not putting it towards um, operating budgets. You're putting it towards one-time capital expenses yeah. that, that are sorely needed when we know they're coming down the road. Right. Putting the stabilization really helps you uh, determine wants and needs. Mm -hmm. The difference Correct. between your wants and your needs is, Absolutely. is the it's, way I look at stabilization, a stabilization account. Is if you really need it, it's there. you can justify it, yep. and you can get and the you'll, vote. Yep. And you'll if get it's the a vote. lot, and you, may not you get really that don't vote. need it, then you're going to struggle getting it out of the stabilization fund. And I think that's how it should be. I agree. That's my own opinion. Yep, I agree with that. Yeah. So, I guess what I was going to suggest here is, in, in looking at what we've got for revenues, if we take a half a million dollars on free cash and add it to this. Our expectation is that we're going to bring this, that this number will come in at 1.3, 2 million 350,000. Mm -hmm. And if it does, then we'll have 500,000 in free cash that we roll over. For next if year's it, use in the same, if it same manner. Then we've covered our butt. So then the budget, the money available, and there are some other sources. There are some other funds too, and we haven't talked about debt, debt exclusion. Mm -hmm. We haven't talked about any of this other money that comes in. We're not talking about waste water treatment plant. There's 700,000 or whatever it is there that we typically bring in that we use for the waste water treatment plant. Right. Um, we haven't talked about the half million dollars that SCEMS brings in. Of course, that, that's a reduction in, in the, the assessment. assessment. Mm -hmm. But this, this I understand. This makes sense to me, I guess. If it makes sense to you, that's the question. Yeah. Because it always hasn't always made sense. We go through and we do budgets, and my gut feeling is that all too often, the end of March, we're sitting down and adding everything up and saying, okay, do we have the money? Yep, we've got the money. Because we March isn't the time to do that. This right is now. the time to say, what do we have for money? To plan, but so plan plan ahead. That's what only I mean. what we have. We only have what we're not going to spend. I mean, we, we need to know what we're going to spend. Otherwise, well, we, we can say what we're going to have. We can talk about all we we're going to have now, all we want. But how much right. we're going to know what we need to spend. And I well, think that's what we got to match. But with what? That. But between now and then, I think we'll, it would be nice to, to keep this in the back of our mind, and we see that the spending. We has get, to stay we underneath get requests that. coming in, and, and we'll talk about a couple yep. coming in that are going to bust the the budget. Uh, let's know it now. Mm -hmm. Let's know it ahead of time, so we can plan for it, whatever it is. Right. We do need to plan for that's, it. That's that's the selectman's problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I want to be conservative. So give or take, we've got we've got you know. 
We're just shy of fifteen million dollars for for budget. My total budget last year was, I don't know, sixteen five, seventeen. Operating. Everything. I can't that includes that includes wastewater. Capital. Capital. Everything. Yeah, it's everything. But this is kind of like operating. Mm -hmm. No, nobody has any problems with this. No, I feel good about that. So just to be wait, 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 wait. You, you said that. I'm sorry. You said that's operating, but capital is operating. Money Excuse me. I should I should say recurring expenses. Capital is a recurring expense. Okay. The, the, the 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 cost of a police cruiser. I know we, we can debate that later, <laughs> but. The cost of a pickup truck, the cost of a dump truck, those are recurring, even okay. though we only right. do it every, right. you know, four or five years. I'm with you. Very oh. recurring expense. So yeah, it, you know, this is this is the money we have to meet recurring expenses. And when we have we have extra cash floating around, and if you want to put in, in stabilization, we can. City annual, it, actually, I think everybody got an email this stuff, but probably it was about 30 or 40 pages. I'm not sure anybody looked at um, Since at some point in time we are going to be doing some borrowing in the not too distant future. Yep. I should have circled what I really bond rating. That's uh, that's Moody's bond rating. Capital A, little A three, and on the back side, it gives you an idea what what it means. So that's for the town of Deerfield. That's I guess in some ways that was worth going to the <laughs> to the conference for. Where's Barbara? She's here. Yeah. Um. Don't ask to me keep, what it means. This is us of 17. And to keep our rating, we do need to make sure that we are paying into OPEB. That was very clear to me. Yep. Um, when that. I went to the financial um, tools workshop at the FERCOG, only a few things, no one else from Deerfield <coughs> was there. But um, what we're doing is fine. We're conservative. I feel comfortable about that. That was fine. Um, we need a more linear process maybe to you know, in other words, the select board has got to push the budgets along faster to the finance committee so that there is less <coughs> um, review overlap. That was one of the things that came up. But um, one of the other things was OPEB. We have to fund yeah. OPEB. I would we like to tell you it didn't come up at the finance committee convention, but I would not be truthful if I did that. So it came up, and, and it is one of the things that, yeah. that they had Somebody, it was, they were from standard and cores, I think. Mm -hmm. It's um, one of the, it's one of the, um, they have just started using that as <coughs> a factor in your rating. Mm -hmm. So, okay. yes. Um, and, and, but, you know, no one could say how much we should be no, contributing. No, but you, as long as you have a halfway decent um, something. Yeah. Well, we're woefully inadequate right now, but it yeah, says, but, but, what we've got a plan started. And we need to build on that plan. Yes. You're wondering what OPEB is. So OPEB is other post-retirement benefits. It's post-employment benefits. Other people's benefits. employment benefits. Other, other people's. It's basically health it's insurance. Health insurance for, for people that have retired. Essentially, 99% of it is health insurance for, for former employees. For retired employees. employees. Moody says our Teachers, adjusted net pension liability highway to operating funding. revenues 0.67x is favorably is materially below the U.S. median. That's and the, would you? Yes, I if, and I saw that. I have no idea what that means. What was that? that? I like the favorable, but what is what's the rest of it mean? Do you know? Where did you see that? I think it means that the total liability we have as a percentage of our revenues, mm -hmm. that number is 
low compared to everybody else in the U.S. median. Yes, it is. It is. So we're in yeah. good shape compared to most yeah. people. Yes. So that means we don't have to dump a quarter of a million dollars a year into OPEC. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll decide what it that, is. Maybe <laughs> it's probably a little more than 5000 but not quite a quarter of a million. No, we don't have to do a quarter of a million. Uh -huh. I, I think that's excessive. Yeah. But well, I, I meant it to be excessive, just like that, I meant the 5000 to be. As long as you're talking talk about OPEP, I just want to bring up a little point. I talked to Trevor about this. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether you brought this. I didn't yet. Uh, one of the things that, uh, you know, ever since I went to the meeting, I mean, I kind of opened my eyes quite a lot. And one of the things we need to be looking at is, uh, seriously, with this OPEP, is the SCEMS. Because we have adopted all of those employees as Deerfield employees. And uh, each year that it goes by without some sort of formula, the other parts of the regional system are walking away with no benefit. And one of the things that came out that was kind of astounding was I think Skip had asked the uh, presenter, you know, uh, approximately what the uh, liability was per employee uh, at this point in time. And he said $3,500 per employee per year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're walking away uh, with the scams where they were walking away with 50% of that liability we're leaving on the table that Deerfield is going to be subject all by itself, hung up with this down the road. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that needs to be looked at sooner mm -hmm. rather than later. Mm -hmm. really for the retired the SCEMS for employees you're talking about, Bruce? Yeah. Pardon? Yeah. Yeah. For the retired yeah. SCEMS employees? Well, down yeah, to go in, down the road. Yeah, to go down into road. To be put into OPEP on an annual basis. That's Right. And if I you don't start doing it now, it. every year that you don't do it, uh, you know, there's 50% of an OPEP liability that we've had to absorb on top of it. Yes. Well, forget the liability for the retired people who, if you have a retired SCEMS employee, who is paying their health benefits now? Who's Deerfield. writing the check? Deerfield. 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 Are we assessing the other member time? Yes. That, okay. For that, yes. So that's but, the liability. Well, but, uh, not, not, for, not for the retirement piece right. of it, though. Retirement. Not for the retirement, right. We, we do pay, if, if you retire, particularly if you retired before you're 65, right. you're entitled to health insurance, and if you happen to have a family plan, what's a family plan now, about 18000 a year? Yeah. So the it's town's portion of that would be about 12000 So if you're retired. Don't we pay half? Yeah, excuse me, you're right. For a retired employee, it would be half, so it would be 9000 When you go on Social Security, if it's if it's two of you that are on Social Security, then and they're each, let's say, it's, it's three hundred dollars a month for two people or whatever it is, that's thirty six hundred. So the town's portion would be thirty six hundred. Your portion would be thirty six hundred. We should really get together and the, think about a, a supplemental insurance, a formula for all of our employees, so we can kind of just cost that across to everybody and understand, you know what we should be putting in and what we should be asking STEMS to put forward towards it. I, I will say one thing that I, and I think probably all of you have heard me ask it before, uh, when we talk about putting money in, where does the money come from? Mm -hmm. so, right, that really does need well, to be looked at. I mean, it's no different from the Absolutely. number of employees, about two thirds of the town employees are school related mm -hmm. and so, even though the town of Deerfield is picking up everybody, that is a huge unfunded school cost that's yes, not being. It is. Is not. It's not in the school budget whatsoever. It's in nobody's budget, and that mm -hmm. that is huge. So. I, I, I disagree. It is in the budget. It's in the budget every year. To what they're going to currently pay retired employees. But not what we're going to pay them not down, gonna, the, down yeah. the road. And that but next year, but getting, the following year we pay it again. You, you, you get to the point where you can't pay that, John. There's no way you're going to eat up that whole delta. You don't, it, it grows every year. I know, but you never have to pay it all at once. You pay it every well, year. But you aren't going to have the money to pay it every year unless you start saving ahead of time, John. You can't wait until 20 years from now and, and expect to come up with, you know, Two hundred thousand, four hundred thousand, a million dollars. Well, but the thing, the, 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 the Trevor, the whole thing about that 
is what that assumption is based on is what it's going to be 20 years down the road. And the figures that Skip just gave to us in the last 10 years, our property taxes have gone up 40%. So in, in another 10 years, that OPEB liability or those benefit are going to go up, but so are our taxes, and we, we currently pay for it every year. So you're never and gonna... that whole thing with OPEB is like, you, all right, if we, if we don't pay, and all of a sudden, 20 years down the road, this is how much it could grow by every year, we're paying that off. Right. Yeah, you're, you're never going to pay it all. You're going to get to the point where we, you don't have money to pay anything else we, off. We, well, no, just I like health insurance. insurance. It's just we, a, we could actually sit down and go through this. I, so long I, as we I don't all get understand. I don't want to get that, sidetracked. Mm -hmm. Yes. So long as we understand that there's a long-term yeah, liability out anything. there, and somehow or other, whatever method it is, we have to address it. And I didn't like what I heard from the guy who presented it, the $3,500 uh, per employee per year. Uh, it's a wicked lot of money. But yeah. We have a bond, right, payable. It's a liability, huge liability. I don't mm -hmm. know how much it is. How much do we owe in bonds? Uh, well, uh, much. roughly. Uh, like Very. four and a half million. Do we, I, on, on are we funding project? that? We don't fund that. It's a liability. We, fund, we pay it every year. Right, exactly. Right, That's exactly. It. And we pay the open. But, uh, uh, there's, a, there's a difference, though. It is if, if the town garage, we get to use. Right. The retired employee, we don't get to use. Bingo. And also, that there's a couple of things. First of all, it's required. It's mandated that, you, that we start funding it. So we really need to start. And I think what, what you're hearing is that you need to come up with a formula sooner than later because you should be assessing these other agencies to start building that money. Right now, you are pay as you go. But if you start building that stabilization, that OPEB, not only can you use the interest in the fund, but also you, you can, can accumulate that money year. so that your levy doesn't continue, your levy, available levy doesn't continue to shrink as your health and care costs go up. And I know you're saying, well, well, your tax rate will go up, but there's, you want that to, to be limited. You want to try to, um, you know, I think build up that fund and use that interest. And that, like I said, right now, if you do pay as you go, if SCEMS in 20 years is gone, then you do own those employees. The town of Deerfield will own those employees if you don't start thinking about how to get them to contribute to that now, well, I believe. And, and, and that has got to be somehow projected in our budget for the co uh, cost of schools. The schools are almost 70% of our budget. Mm -hmm. and, and that cost needs to be built in because there, it's not anywhere. Right. And, and actually, unlike teacher pensions, not their, not their health insurance, teacher pensions, which are picked up, which not the town doesn't have to pay, but you do have to pay. This, this is out of that yeah. <laughs> report that uh, Frontier sent to us on their capital improvement. And you got the back side is this Sunderland that didn't need to be here, but it was on the page, so I did Xerox it. So that's Sunderland share, is that? Yeah, this is Deerfields and Sunderland's is on the other side, and I figured it didn't hurt. At least so that you know what you want this? I think so, yeah. It's just on that page you're talking about. And so, Trevor, I'm going to depend on you to explain yeah. this stuff because I'm not 100 percent. Matter of fact, I'm I'll probably try. not what more than 50 percent sure. So a little bit. Um, so I was I was late to this committee, but we um, we presented to the to the um, Frontier School Committee. We were a subcommittee looking at costs and what was needed for you know, stuff that hasn't been maintained there and, and other larger products, projects that they can't just fund out of their um, regular assessments uh, operating budget for the years. Uh, so those have accumulated over the years. They have this, these, these things that need to be spent. They're trying to figure out, well, how can they do this and how can they do it over a long enough period to, um, to make it affordable for the towns and, and not too long that you're, you know, financing stair treads. So um, they developed, they, we looked at developing a, um, again, a capital stabilization, uh, capital improvement planning committee, very much like the one we have in town here. Um, a group of people together, a selectman 
uh, was one selectman from every town and school committee members, and Joe Markirian um, from the FERCOG kind of helped put, put all this together. So um, it's still in flux, and, and they're, they're, you know, they had a presentation on the 11th. Um, finance committee members came and um, voiced concerns and selectman voiced concerns, and, and they're still taking input right now. So we we're hoping to kind of put this before you. Um, get input from you. Uh, they're, they're looking at trying to find ways to make it um, how we can stretch this out or how we can, um, again, make it affordable because there's there's areas where you're, you may need some debt exclusion or look at other funding sources. Um, right now, this is just the cost uh, of what's needed. There's no grant applications involved yet, like a Green Communities Grant or something like that. So part of the plan is the projects, and then also part of the plan is, is funding a capital improvement, you know, stabilization account over the years to, to start to deal with and address over a 10-year period the needs that are there. The biggest, one of the largest needs was the track. Um, if they were gonna change that, that's about 600,000. The other part were priorities, capital needs that were priority one, two, and three. They kind of came up with what was needed first, second, and third, and kind of what years they were gonna, they were gonna do that. So they were looking at you know, funding the track and then putting money in stabilization and then some stuff for deferred maintenance, which a lot of them, some of them they've done already and some of them they've, um, they probably will pay out of E&D or excess and deficiency. So it's just kind of an overlook of what they have for needs and how, they, how the towns might go about or how the, how the Frontier School Committee might go about putting out a bond or needing this money to, to fix this, fix these issues. Um, I talked to Joe tonight and he's, um, he's taken input from Waitley and um, he heard some of the stuff, you know, Skip had spoke and others had spoke the other night. So they're looking at ways to kind of, they realize the issue are either a debt exclusion or how, how, how the town's going to come up with this. As, as Skip said, you only have so much money to work with every year. You only get maybe 300 and something thousand or whatever it goes up a year. And they're asking for 200 of it a year. How how the rest of the town going to do any priorities that they have? So they're looking at other ways that we can do this, either stretch it out longer or maybe do a debt exclusion on some stuff. Or, you know, one thought was using some CPA money to fund our portion of the track. You know, so it wouldn't have to, we wouldn't have to bond for it. Um, so that's kind of where we're at so far. I don't know if you had anything to add. Yeah. Or if I made any Go ahead. sense. The deferred maintenance, mm -hmm. uh, 10,000 year one, 35,000 year two, that row. Uh, let me find that here. Deferred. Would that come out of, would we do, typically that's been in the operating budget. It is, yeah, typically. And it says, so is the operating budget going to be reduced by that amount of money? No, so what's happening, I, I believe, is that um, they've been taking about 50000 a year and doing what they could. At the end of the year, they'd say, well, we have, you know, 50000 let's put it towards this. And they would actually add to it uh, a lot of years that, you know, wasn't seen. So they were doing, they've been doing capital stuff. I mean, they've had to over the last 10 years, but they haven't really asked for, much that's other than last year, I think they asked for a tractor and maybe a couple other things, but maybe the main thing was the tractor. But they haven't really asked for any capital over the last <coughs> 10 years, so they, they really need to, um, they need to supplement that, those things. And a lot of the, you know, the, the deferred maintenance, a lot of that, again, if you, well, I don't have all this, but there's a list of the projects. Some of them they've done, like door hardware and security stuff was on there. They've paid for that already. And, there were a couple other things that they've done. So some of it would come out of that account. The whole idea was to start to build up a, um, a stabilization account to start spending and, and taking care of those things, you know, in one time and not, not bonding that or not going out borrowing for that kind of stuff, doing it out of their operations. So I'm not probably the expert on this at all. Joe would have more info. And, yeah, you know, I mean, I have. Virtually none. So they're still trying to kind of piece together how, you know, they know they have these needs that need to get done and they're looking for input on how they should go about doing it to make it most affordable to the communities. Well, I, I don't want to sidetrack this too much, but this is, this is exactly what frustrated me over there is this whole thing, there are things that need to get done over to high school. I will not argue that point. But the vast majority of this, 80% of it, is not what do we 
you know, this is what we want, this is what we want, how are we going to pay for it? All these meetings were, was how do we finance it? There was never discussions about replacing the gym floor. We need a new gym floor. I was the only one that went, well, why do you need this floor replaced? Well, it's at a, its end of its lifespan. What in the heck is the lifespan of an oak floor? I said, why don't you just sand it? A sander. A sander. What's that? A, it has to be a sander. Well, I think it's That's the, finishing to a certain it's point. It's refinishing and then you, the floor. Right, you refinish the floor, it. and they do that. But it, it's at the, I, 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 I don't buy this. You know, same thing with the bleaches. There's, there's multiple, multiple things. But, you know, it, it, all this is, is explaining to the taxpayers, this is what we want. How, this is how we, the best way to pay for it. And I and I just don't I just don't get it. There's well, a couple of concerns that I have too, and, and I agree. <coughs> the building obviously is an asset. You've got to take care of, of it. You've you got to maintain it and that. I hear exactly what Kip's saying as far as you know, penny wise, palm foolish. So you have to more or less pick or choose. But uh, another concern that I do have, but I understand why they did it because it's a regional school was the stabilization fund establishment and policy. Mm -hmm. And I just want to make sure that everybody understands, if I'm reading this correctly on page 28 of their, of their policy here, basically they're asking for about $4 million from the towns. Deerfield's portion would be uh, roughly about $2 million. But they're, they're coming to the towns, they're asking for the money once the towns approve that money, then the towns are out of it. The well, towns basically have no say. Not, is if you, well, if you look accurate. at this, though, if you look at this, it comes down to use appropriation of stabilization funds. Spending from stabilization requires two-thirds vote of all regional school committee members. A vote by or approval of the regional school district member towns is not required. So that that leads me to believe that once, once the town voters vote the approval of this dollar amount, no matter how it's going to be funded, the voters at that point on are out of the loop. Well, Basically, the committees, and I realize there's representation on the committees. Well, yeah, I mean, how else do you stuff. represent your town? But, right, but at the <laughs> but at the same time, that's a small that's a very small representation for because it comes down to two thirds again. So now what happens? We come right back back down to the school budget itself. To on the regional budget, the only way you can stop that budget if you disagree with it is you need three out of four towns, uh, I mean two out of four towns to vote it down. Correct. You're going to be basically in the same situation here with that committee. So, so you're, you're, you're asking the towns to spend four million dollars to basically take that four million dollars, give it to this committee. No. Yeah, no. and the committee is <laughs> going to make the decisions on, on what's, the what's voted, what's approved, what's not appropriated in that. And, and I'm not questioning the validity of the committee, but so I think, would you I think when you get yeah. into, and I've, I've worked in regional schools, yeah. committees change, people change, of course, the they intent should. of the language change as time goes on. And it could be two years down the road, three years down the road, you could have completely different committee members with different intent on language and different ideas on how that money should be spent. And, and I'm not questioning anybody because everybody involved, I know they're there to do good. There's no question about it. But I feel a little uncomfortable as far as a voting member of the town, just mm -hmm. as a resident, and I'm just expressing my opinion yep. here, uh, I feel a little uncomfortable taking and saying, I'm willing to support $2 million from Deerfield and hand it over to this committee and they can spend as need be, as they see need be. But that's not how it would happen because the funding doesn't just go four million dollars. All of a sudden, you have four million dollars. No, you, I, I you have a chance that's to over do a time this. Period. And, th and this stuff needs to be addressed, right? And yeah. you need and and something may come up and get on the list later. Something may drop off. It may decide, oh, the bleachers aren't that bad. Let's wait. That's what the right. representation of every town, and that's what a democracy is: is every person gets a spot at the table 
and to their best of their ability, in the best interest of representing their co constituents, mm -hmm. they put forward the ideas that need to take place. And then that goes before that committee, and they decide, and then it goes on to another committee, and they vote. I mean, that, that's what, that's what, that's America. That's what, that's how we do this stuff. And it's, and these are, these are, you act like it's going to another, some nefarious board with other odd intentions down the road. These are our children. This is what the I whole did, thing is I, for. I'm it's not saying 50 that. percent of it well, is deal Well, at the, same, at the same time, what? Trevor, there's a lot of people in town that look at it differently. Okay? Uh, so, so how? So I'm just... Well, so your children. So, but, so. but can I interrupt yeah. for a minute? No. And, and this is the same argument that we had there. And I, I'll say the same thing I said to but that you very to nice... That, I, I, you're right, I did. Because there you're you saying the same thing that a very nice lady from Sunderland said. This is for our children. Tell me, what does a $34,000 lawnmower do for the quality of education for your child? They have a What does $72,000 do for office, I'm not done yet, office furniture do for the quality of the education of your child? What does $167,000 for bleachers do for the quality of the education of your child? Shall I go on? Yes. And that's the no, problem. Can I, can no, I answer no, that no, question? No, no, no. Enough so no. Oh, come on. Let me answer this. You have to, you have to, you have to go back at this information. The reason it's, it's, it's a value is that, that our children have good playing fields to play on, and that means that people want to bring their kids here. That means they want to build a house in our community. They want to fund their educate, have their kids go through our school system and be educated here. We invest in our infrastructure so that we get people moving to our town, liking our school, wanting to come here, wanting to live here, and paying taxes here so we can afford to reinvent the wheel again in 50 again. years and build another school. Okay, I mean, you, you, get, you, get the last, you get the last, we're going to move on. Go ahead. Okay, Bruce. just one quick comment. I guess I don't under, I, I understand what the whole theory is, and I agree halfway between Henry and Trevor. But, and I definitely agree a lot with Jeff. Uh, part of what you're reading on 28 is, is almost verbatim out of Mass General Law. Right, yeah, okay, no, I so, understand that. Uh, right. So I guess my question is, why not to do the same thing as we do with the tractor? When the committee says we need this, you put it out to the four towns, and the four towns vote on it. And that way you still have the towns have the input. Oh, check and out. if it's for the children, the town will support it. If they don't feel it's for the children, uh, you know, uh, then that it's a want rather than a need, they will not support it. So, okay. So, I think this discussion is probably going to go on a long time. A but, long time, but right? For, well, for the time being, April. <laughs> there are there are two there are two issues, one of which has been addressed by several of us tonight. The other issue has not been addressed is. How do we pay for it? <laughs> I have a question. You, do you get, we don't you get have your to wallet out when you do that? It relates to how you pay for it. Debt exclusion. The money you can't do all of it debt exclusion. But you can only you can do a debt exclusion on debt. The money tree? So, yeah. Right. So, no, but, but how does debt exclusion work in the case of a regional school where we're voting 50% of it? Does, do, does the town of Deerfield vote a debt exclusion for its portion? of the assessment? Yes. I think so. It depends. Well, I, I believe that's what we've done in the past, although it's, it was before my time, but I, yeah. I think that's correct. The, the person to talk to so. on that is the business manager at the tech school since we just did right. a whole bunch. Exactly. Or the Department of, uh, Department of Revenue. We yep. do need an answer to that. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm pretty sure that's what happened when we did this re restoration work at Frontier. That's before. part of what Joe's working on in the next few days well, is going to send out a new yeah, thing. I mean, I, I want to get. Of course. One of the things where I think we need to get the. Of course, we do. We need second opinions and second opinion. other ideas. Um, but that, I, that's one of the things he learned, heard loud and clear the other mm -hmm. night is if, if the town decides to move forward with this type of plan or for towns, how do we go about funding it. I mean, because some of this stuff, you're obviously not going to debt exclusion stair treads or, you know, so, whatever, small stuff the, of new flooring in a, in a gym. What I, what well, I did certainly really lifespan. I mean, you Of don't course, wanna, all the same yeah. things that you deal with on your committee. Talk, yeah. I mean, that's exactly the we same thing they want to adopt. We stuff that has 20 years for a lifespan of five years. What, what I did want to bring up is, give or take, if you look at the back page of these, that four-page piece. First one? Yeah, yep. in the back page where it says, Deerfield Revenue Projections. 
one of the work done. Oh, and you okay. look at the, where it says M equals, mm -hmm. that's the total amount of revenue. Total revenue, it's not just taxes, everything we get. That's yep. the increase in revenue, $390,000. And Frontier is asking for us to come up with 200000 of that every year for the next 10 years. So we, that's an issue that... We, Right. Does need to come up. And shy How do we of, pay for it? Shy of, um, and they, I think they still all have to look at green communities grants, other things like that, that they can kind of start dropping that that number, and then looking at, do they really need bleachers? Do they, you know, there has been no. We've spent. I think the, the, the school committee has spent no money on a true assessment of the of the school. Mm -hmm. They've went to Bob, and because he's had so many years there, and said. What would you do? What could you do? What, what, what do we need to do in the next few years? That's kind of where the thing came up. There's been no professional assessment of do these bleachers really have to get done. So I think yeah. that there, there's a lot of work left to do. I think they're more looking for not so much the I need $4 million. They want to say, do you think it's a good idea to put a plan together and have a committee together and an oversight committee and start right. tackling these projects? Even if I don't with, agree with what they came up with, I think the idea of putting a committee together other than the fact that committees get out of hand after a while, but but the idea of, of going through and saying, Getting let's a take a look here and see what yeah. we need and what we're going to need over the next few years. Yeah, Absolutely. I don't have a problem with that. Yep. Well, I, I may disagree with what they come up with. Of course. Well, I, I might be, isn't that what the committee's doing now? Or? Yeah. Uh, that's, what do you mean? I think, isn't that what your committee is, do, that committee is doing? Starting the process. Starting the process. Yeah. Yes, yeah. That, that's what the, yeah. this was the proposal to kind of, to put it out to the towns to say, and this, I guess it's up to the Frontier School Committee whether they'd adopt this. This is their ball of wax. Um, yeah, is to, get, is to get that committee and get a representation from each town, a select board or a finance committee on that committee and a, and a school committee member and kind of put together that group to decide, as, as Jeff and your committee does, is this necessary or is it not? Or can you, how do you, how, where's the funding source? What are you going to do with this stuff? So, it's yeah. It is. I think they'll at least move ahead with that. They're looking to see also, you know, it, does the town have any appetite to fund it? And, and, and at to what amount? You know, is, there, is, is, you know is, is the amount into stabilization too much or too little? Or, you know, what's the right figure depending on what the needs are that are there? I, I didn't think we probably would come up with a solution to this tonight. <laughs> I needed to get out there. Okay. Uh, here's Pass this out. You can take a quick look at it, and then uh, you know, we can quickly take that. I have one. I have one too. Thank you. At some point in time, I was talking with Brenda about what about debt, and how much money can a town borrow? And the back, look at the number on the back page. <clears throat> that, was, that was what Brenda was able to come up with. Is that 100% accurate? We really don't know, but it's a start. Yeah. And when we start looking at the wastewater treatment plant, we need to get, we need yeah, to get. Uh, when you talk about this indebtedness over what period of time? It doesn't matter. How much do you owe at this it, point I, in time? Yeah. Total. Just this point in time. Total. Okay. Yeah. Well, that would be enough for the sewer plant. Well, right now, right now we've got <laughs> about $5 million in debt. <laughs> That's the, the school roof and the highway garage. Hey, it's about time you got here. So, you missed all of the, you missed all the fun. <laughs> it is. It is. Just um, it. <laughs> That's why we're in a strong position and then we're rated high. Because we only do, we have less than five million dollars. Don't do anything. So it's more closer I, to four. Yeah. I listened at that the meeting that we had when you had uh, was it was it Dave? Cricket. Yep. And uh, yeah, I, I was confused on the financing of this thing. And the I can help a little bit with that. Cost somewhere in the neighborhood of $30 million. Right. To two points. 
if you yeah, did all if, four if, phases. If you did all four phases and we paid for it ourselves rather than getting grants. Yes. Yep. Well, then the question is indebtedness. If we get grants, that's one thing. But yep. When we built the elementary school, that was an $8 million bond issue. We had to issue that bond. The town issued that bond, $8 million. Right. The state came in every year. Their, our debt payment was 500000 the state came in every year and gave us 325000 we'd go up to 170000 Except for right. the first year that Mitt Romney was in, um, elected and he didn't make the payment. Yeah, but the, the point was that this, the state was paying. You're going to pay back. But we did have to put one. Yeah. Right. So is that, is that part of that $34 million, the $8 million, or was the $2.7 million our share? I don't know. I don't know how they count the, cal calculate that because the eight million is in our is in our name, and given yes. the experience that we had with Mitt Romney, they, the state can renege at any time. So I think the inflation schedule using over thirty years at uh, I think at three percent. I know you don't have that. Mm -hmm. And how accurate is this? Well, the, the, the numbers are accurate. Is, is the question is, do we, you know, what is what does the financial package so, look like? As far as I'm aware, um, we're um, we'd be going for a loan from the USDA at two percent, and they would then grant us up to 45, but who knows what, if we get that top. I mean, we're in position to get the top 45% reimbursement, but I don't know if they would. We would have a, and, and then so the plan is right now, just to get a little background on where we're at, is um, Dave Prickett is doing the, um, doing the application for USDA, and we would apply for phase one only, and that would be for the South Deerfield plant, roughly $10 million. Um, maybe 11, I forget exactly how much it was, um, for, that, for that first phase one. And that, um, <coughs> how, to, how this was kind of played if you out. Look in, if you look in the back side, the phases are there. Nine, oh, good. 9.2. Yeah, so Nine that's kind of what, where, kind of the focus that he's working on now. And the engineering would be about 100 grand of that. And that would be in year 19 because I think he, so we, we figured we had the money for that in the budget to, to do that but I wanted to talk to Brenda about that and make sure that we had so how are we going to finance this thing it's a 30 overall million, it's a 30 million dollar project well it wouldn't wouldn't be all I mean it depends on if the town wants to go with all four phases and go right through the whole thing um, what if the town doesn't want to do any of it and then you don't do any of it well, no, I, I, I guess the, the point is the plants aren't going to last. How much oh, right. is there any part of this that we don't have to do uh, reasonably? Probably. I mean, some of the pipes probably here and there. I mean, there's not, I mean, you definitely need a head works. So you definitely need a second clarifier. I mean, I think everybody agrees on I, I those mean, two I, I'm items. I'm assuming that ultimately we need, to, we need all 30 million or 28 million or 29, whatever. Eventually, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I, I mean, I, you can sit here and debate and pick there's and. Still yeah, I mean, I think there's still some hard engineering that would still need to get done, and does does it really come in at 30 or less? But I think they were on the conservative side and putting, I think, a three or four percent inflation cost on it, and that's where they oh, came this up with that. inflation. I just took the bottom line costs. No, their no, their figures for that 30 million was about whatever they had total was was included. Well, there, 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 there was a 36 million. million. This is oh, the, 36. Okay. This is the 30 million or the 28, whatever the number is. Yeah. 28, at, 890, at 29 million. If we if did it all one shot at today's prices, right? If we went out and voted it tomorrow, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, how would you propose, or what, what was the thought on voting it? The thought was to vote phase one first. I think you're going to have to do it in phases because you're not going to do the whole thing at one shot, are you? Are you? We're not. USDA is not going to give us a loan for 40, uh, for for 36 million. Um, How about 30? I doubt. How about it. 29? I think um, you're probably only going to see phase one. Bruce Wayne has four or five million the first year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and, and then, then it was the second year, four or five million. That's what he said at, at 2021 and 2022. 
10 years of well, mm -hmm. So we're going to we're going to have these Staggering. loans out there every year. Every year. Staggered items. Yeah. And that's well, and it also depends on on you know. Um, I mean, there might be an infrastructure bill. Everybody and his brother's plants are from the same mm -hmm. 70s Clean Air and Water Act. Yeah. So everybody is clamoring for infrastructure um, programs. So that might just happen. Um, and if it does, US, USDA has had no money for two years. It hasn't been funded. It has not been a priority of the current administration. <laughs> you think it's then be all of a sudden, they um, put some money in there. And um, so we're going to try to get it. Is it, is it going to be available again? Who knows? It's, it's the funding piece that, that I'm completely confused about. Yeah. What I do know is this. I, I think we're, we're If we hoping. took this thing over the next 13 years and we did the whole thing, I do know that we would be better off, assuming we're, whatever, the grants didn't change. Mm -hmm. That's just when we got them. But they, we got the same grants. We would be better off doing the whole thing up front and getting it done and over with than piecemealing it. No, because I, I feel like, I feel very strongly we should get grants. Well, I'm saying if the grants, if the, if we get the but same never grants. Get the grant, no, you never get okay. the grants in one pot. The USDA would never, that's the most, uh, right now, it's the only program that's available to us. And they would never give us anything Why would be close. Why would we be better off because of inflation? Yeah. I mean, we're, if we can borrow the money for 2 or 3%, why would we want to take worry about a 3 or 4% inflation rate on the, on the materials and labor? I think your rates are going to take a while to do that anyway. I think the issue is a 45% grant, at least on the first $5 million. That's, Right. That's all you can count on. That's true. You're right about that. Beyond that, it's a I shot see. Dark. Uh, okay. We don't really know. Trying to get the forty-five. But I mean, what you have to do is yeah, maximize that. And you, that and makes you have sense. To keep hustling. I mean, you have to be out there. You have to be alert. You have to be, you know, advocating. So, I mean, I, yeah, this this is a guideline of what potentially what we have to do. But, I mean, I would hope that we would not spend more than ten or twelve million myself. At a shot. At, at our at a total out of our pockets. I mean, I would anticipate trying to hustle at least half of this. But it needs to be worked, you know. We well, even with phase one, uh, if you were to receive four or five million dollars from USDA the first year, about a million of dollars of that would be designed, at least a half million dollars for the 500,000. About 10% design. That doesn't include any oversight. Any bidding management per year could be up to fifteen or So you're borrowing that money through the USDA, paying the consultant. Then you have two or three million left to do work. So that's how it's going to work every calendar year. With the budget for Yeah, unless you got to borrow the design money, you got to borrow the construction money. Unless, like I said, I mean, Or then when you get to that point in the first year, USDA dries up, then you go and bond. How many users are there? There's about 800 users. Uh, uh, there's 690. But, you know, just looking at these figures now, and I know what we get now, without the increase to our sewer, I don't remember, I think the average sewer bill was in the vicinity of five or six hundred dollars. Not only would all the residents pay a certain portion in their property taxes for this, but if you just go by this number, all the sewer users with that five or six hundred dollar uh, sewer bill, it would increase by fifteen hundred dollars a year. They better off putting in septic. Yeah. The, no, uh, actually not, but the sewer users are going to, to start with, yeah. if we did the whole, if we did everything all up front. Yeah. It, you know, and these figures are right. Then the sewer users are going to be responsible for $1.3 million well, that's first what I'm year. Saying. It would increase on an average. So you're right. If you had, if, on if you had 1,000 sewer users, you get $1,350. bucks. If you got less, then it goes up. So, yes, I, that's, that's so, the, I mean, that's tough for, for people to swallow because, not, like I said, they're, they're going to get an increase in their property. <laughs> 
plus they're going to have this $1,500 thing. I mean, you know, they're, they're, they could be looking at a, a three, well, between that and the I've got close to $3,000 increase. And, and, and I ran this out over 30 years. Yeah. I mean, typically, I don't know that we can run it out any more than that. Yeah. That's well, Barbara. I mean, my septic system was the high, very high end, but I mean, most, you can't put a septic system in for less than twenty or twenty-five thousand dollars. Really. No, I understand. No, I, I've so, got a septic system, so I. Depends on how bad it is. And the other one is, at the end of thirty years, these plants aren't going to be worth it. No, we have to turn around again. But I can look at it this way. Some of us here aren't going to worry about that. <laughs> Some of us, yeah. Some of us. Well, there's also another concern, too. You know, we've just spoken about Frontier Regional with their capital plan. We've spoken about the sewer treatment plan. We have said nothing about the $8 million library. town library. Yeah. We yeah, haven't I mean, said we're, question, we're questioning how, how to pay for those two items. Now, when you add the library in, and then senior center and that, we we've, we've got some serious issues here. We haven't said anything about start buying lottery office. tickets. We, yeah, we haven't said anything about a town office facilities that. No we question. haven't said anything about senior center, like you said. We haven't said anything about senior housing. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but. And those are all going to happen in the near term. No. Depends. <laughs> <laughs> Do you don't think on, so? We're going to talk. We're going to talk here. about them. Depends on how people how people vote. Well, the thing is, we can't give them any sewage. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's and true. You can't build a building just to get sewage. Yeah. Just we right. can't afford to do Anything. all of what's on our plate. <laughs> so we have to think about priorities. Exactly. That's well, it's the 30-year plan, and it's still we can't afford it. Right, exactly. <laughs> so, all right, I'm well, done. Uh, is there, if, can, we, can we end the meeting? If you want to sit around and scream and holler at each other, we can do that. No. Uh, this is productive. This is not, it's not screaming. It's just that no. we, have to, yeah. we have to work together. No. And it we is. have to hustle and, and, and be aware, um, go to meetings, and make sure that we Try to bring in as much money as we can to offset our costs. No one has talked about um, the the costs that incur every year because of climate change. These frequent events that we have, weather events that cause damage that are way beyond our normal operating budget, Kevin's normal operating budget. You know, we've been able to cover it with NRCS, EWP money, and now the MVP program is sort of putting it in, but. It's not going to cover everything. I'm going to leave before we, my grandchildren and say, good luck. <laughs> good luck. I know. Well, um, before we, we head out, though, is there, is there any direction we can give back or input we can give back to, to the committee or to Joe Markarian? Or is there anything we want to tell him? Like, look, this is totally unaffordable, or the inputs are we think some of this stuff is hogwash. We should, you know, you should have a... You should spend some of this money to do a true assessment before you go and do anything. That's or what I, would I, I would like a true assessment. Yeah. Because well, how much money do you think that would cost? Well, you need to hire someone that's really qualified. Well, right. I think it'd be a good investment. There's, there's I think that that just like we did are doing right, for the buildings. Right. Well, my understanding, I think Bob <coughs> was planning on retiring yeah. at some <coughs> point here. I, I myself think that you need to find a good, solid, hands-on facilitator yeah and, and who can do these some of the things I see on that I just it kind of surprised me that it wasn't just that done. we couldn't have a crew there at the school capable of doing well, those things and, and then maybe they are maybe they it just that there hasn't been money there could and be that's why I say it's very important to obviously that's an asset yeah, that absolutely. we should be investing in there's no yep. question about it yeah I just, I would just like to do well, it wisely. I, I would throw this out. Just keep this in mind. The uh, frontier was was built in '57. It was rebuilt in '7. Just call it '7. That's 50 years. It's been 50. It's go. Actually, it's been 20. It's going on 20 years since the. Uh, so another 30. 35 years, and they're going to be talking about a new school. Mm -hmm. 
never ends. Bruce. Yeah, you, you asked, uh, <laughs> I won't well, worry. Uh, my issue is that, like, that we should have the Frontier Regional School hire a, an architect to do an assessment and retain that architect or retain them to be in the project. Okay. Bruce, why, why are you and suggesting... Okay. Bruce, why are you suggesting an architect rather than an engineer? Because most of the work is architectural. An architect will bring in any uh, they'll bring it they'll bring in a structural engineer. Okay. okay. Control, All right. Control, where necessary. Mm. Oh, where necessary. You have okay. one person what? coordinating with the subcommittee. Right. Making sure that there's no chief procurement officer in the school. No business. Here. Right. And there's no current as of the facility, um, right. Makes right. me very nervous, do I have you, to tell you. Do you um, mm -hmm. have me an too. idea of what that it's would expensive. typically, because we were trying to figure out, you know, we talked about uh, putting um, money in to manage this stuff year, you know, year to year, and some of the later years it wasn't really necessary to get further out, they're just smaller projects, but um, like, the, what do you think would be a, a dollar amount that they should budget in this plan to, to hire an architect. What do they cost a year? It's around 10%, don't they? Uh, or, but, well, it depends what you need then from design all the way through construction. Or like at least an assessment well, and then... Assessment, maybe two through construction, seven or eight percent of the whole budget. So of like four million or something or less than that? Well, we put some of that in there, but we didn't know if it would shoot in the dark. How much was that? That's the due to project, but that's not the assessment. The assessment all the way through. Yeah, because I, I guess my understanding of this is partly that the data is still being massaged. It is. But the process is what they are also looking for feedback right. on. So it sounds like right. you are supportive of, of them the process. giving you this information and having a process. And the things that Bruce is saying are actually in here. In this document it says that you know Joe is giving recommendations for how you would come up with these values. It's actually right. in there. And they have budgeted for contingency and oversight. And, things. and I wasn't I'm not sure that's that was exactly enough. what you're saying. But I'm just saying Minimum. that they've put some things in there. Yeah. So I think they are, that is a reflection that yep. you know, they're what, looking at that. What they've done by, by, mm -hmm. they've left the decision making and coordination and the implementation all up to And that's not enough knowledge to really do. Well, this actually right. says the district. I mean, it keeps saying the district, the district. So it's uh, you know, like the, annually, it says you should update the cost estimates and but, you know, all you need this a, is in here. I think right. you, you're right, Bruce. You need somebody with that architectural so knowledge. But they get information. They have information they on the projects, and their prices, mm -hmm. and they need specifications. Okay. That's good to know. <clears throat> Makes sense. All right, there's, there is money in here for the track and the major projects to go bottom. Metal, like $5,000. Right. $5, yeah. I don't think it's enough. Right. We have design, we have design, we have design, we have design, we have plans. Who's going to bid it? Right. None of that. Okay. I just hate to see $238,000 on annual budget in 2020. Now, we've only averaged out to $199,000. Yeah, average is here for 10 years. 10 years. Then there's going to be the next thing for this. Mm hmm. Well, there'll always be something to work on, but. He said we only get about three hundred and fifty, four hundred thousand dollars in new money every year. So And I want to so spend a bunch of it on downtown. Front, and the <laughs> other thing with Frontier is that that doesn't include the hundred and fifty thousand dollars that that they normally hundred and twenty five, hundred and fifty thousand dollar increase in their operating budget. So right. add the two of them together pretty much 
It's not anything. It's not, it's not, it's not anything. Of all of our new money, but it's closes it. The, the other, you know, initiatives I'd like to see, and I mean, we talked about that and that. Really, we're working on streetscapes, so hopefully we'll get some grant money for that. But the sidewalks downtown, the town common sidewalks really need to be addressed. And I'm hoping to put some preliminary budget numbers to the CIPC to look at for next year to try and move that forward. It's a, it's a lot like herding cats to get to figure out like your sidewalk goes here, then it empties to nowhere. It goes to a crosswalk that goes to a 10 inch curb. So it, it's a disaster downtown to try and figure out how to do all this stuff. So we have our complete streets preliminary thing on Wednesday night. So please come and um, let us know what you think about what should happen downtown. But we really want to get, we really need to get that stuff moving and um, start finding things. December 1st is. Um, I know, it's quick. Yep, so I got like three Monday. days. <laughs> I'm cl I've been working this. It takes like forever. I've been pulling teeth to try and get somebody to give me a number to how much it costs to put a sidewalk in. It's four hundred thousand. I heard two thousand bucks from Kip, and I heard no. four hundred. And four hundred thousand from somebody else. <coughs> Just like our town common, I don't plan on spending that much. What's going in there? Is it sidewalks or just new? Uh, new planting, fencing. Yep. Taking everything out. Wow. Using new sidewalk. Do you think? Do you think the common would be that kind of money? I just want to do. Depends who you hire. Some sidewalks. Can we plant grass? Yeah, true. How many engineers you have? Well, look at this. Look at, look at down on Mill Village Road. The state had fifty thousand dollars. They planted eighteen trees and. Six Christmas trees, and it right. looks like a mess. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I just, and that's what you get for 50 grand. Yeah, no, I, we're going to do it a lot more frugally, but I just want to just, but it, it, where the sidewalks in the common go are important, and it really ties into. Yes, depressing. It's confusing to figure out, and and because. Yeah. We had them do a design. We have that. Yep, I have that. That's been done last year. We've done it a couple times. But they were student projects. They, no, they didn't put a price to it. We have an engine. We are working with Ty and Bond right now, working on our tier uh, two for complete streets, our prioritization plan. Uh, we're hoping to get some numbers from them on some of the things Trevor's talking about. Can we, Using can we adjourn? Yeah. To the yes, I just wanted to let you know that was coming. Yeah. Yeah. Can we adjourn? Yep. Somebody make a motion? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. For the Finance Committee, all those in favor of adjourning, say aye. aye. Make a motion to adjourn the select board. All those in favor? Aye. aye.